Because what do you like about just the, the improvement y'all made on the defensive end throughout the course of the season? And where do you think y'all kind of found the most? Well, I think the, the biggest thing about our defense is that's it's kind of the foundation of our team. Is We want to be a good defensive team. We want to be able to get stops, timely stops, rebound the ball. I think that directly impacts our ability to be good on offense. Um, we're seeing improvement, more improvement as the season progresses. Coach Jaron Collins is doing a, a terrific job with our defense, and, and guys are just continuing to buy in. This is probably a second season in a row where Brandon's going to lead y'all in assists. Um, just what do you think about you know him as a playmaker? Do you think? Do you think he's like underrated? Do you think people realize you know what he can do as a playmaker? I think I definitely think he's underrated in his ability to play make on the floor. Um, he's, he's so unselfish as a basketball player and high IQ, the way he sees the game. We all know he can probably go out and score 25, 30 points a night anytime he wants to, but his ability to be to, to sacrifice and make the extra pass is contributing to this, this team's success. And when you have so many guys who can score, I mean, there's just going to be nights where someone has to sacrifice. Do you, do you talk to them about it? Is that something they've just grasped of, like, it might not be my night tonight, but it'll be somebody else's? It, it's a continuous talk, communication, from my perspective as a coach, but also getting them to understand uh, how important it is that, you know, no matter whose night it is, we have to continue to just trust each other, trust that, you know, Trey had a big night against Atlanta, and B.I. had a big night, you know, maybe a few games ago. Zion may have a big night, Jonas, and that we all buy into it. That, that's, that's winning basketball. How much does that kind of come from the top two guys and their willingness to sacrifice throughout the season? It definitely starts with them. Um, they're, they're unselfish by nature. They see someone open, they'll make the easy pass, make the easy play, and the rest of the guys follow them. I think Trey's been the leading scorer three of the last six games. Just what's it like to see that kind of productivity from him, especially after that shooting slump earlier? It's great to see Trey get on the floor and look like himself. I think that's the important part for our group is he's such a big part of what we do. His ability to space the floor for, for Z, for CJ, for, for BI, and now hitting shots, playing defense, rebounding the ball, getting out in transition. It's just fantastic for us right now. Have you done anything differently that, he, that you've noticed since the last month, or what's kind of led to, to this? He and Coach Corey Brewer, I mean, they just gotten back to simple, working on the simple things that they've done in the past, and it's, it's good to see him hit the shots. But really, all the other things that he's doing as well, you know, getting steals, deflections, rebounding, working hard defensively. Coach, are you guys a contender now? Um... You know, we still got work to do. You know, I, I don't want to get in front, get get here and say we're a contender. We have work to do. The possibility is that we could be, but it's a lot of work in front of us, and, and that's our mentality is just stay working game by game. And if we do that, we, we, we feel like we'll be in a good place. But when you win all of those games on the road, that's not an accident, right? No, it's not an accident. I mean, but that don't you think that's kind of a – a telltale sign when you can do that? Well, for me, the telltale sign is where you finish, this, how you finish the season. And right now, we have 18 games in front of us. It's going to still be a tight race coming down the stretch. And we want our focus to maintain Cleveland and then the next game after and not get too ahead of ourselves. But we, we definitely are confident in what we can do. Um, and we leave it at that. You talked about the goal this year being wanting to be above that plan line. That's something y'all have wanted to shoot for since the All-Star break. But now, I mean, do you even allow yourself to think about shooting even higher than that, seeing how close we are to maybe four with the Clippers coming to town soon and stuff like that? Well, you, you always have a number set of goals. You know, you have some goals that are super, super high, and you have some goals that are right in front of you, in front of you that's attainable. Um, we're always trying to be the best team that we can be. And if we can win all 18 games, well, we win all 18 games. But if not, the bare minimum is that we want to try to be six and above. And wherever that takes us, we'll be ready for that. You mentioned Cleveland coming into town. Uh, you mentioned Cleveland coming into town. What's the biggest thing that you have to watch for with the Cavs? They're a hard-nosed team. They're a good defensive team. It's not going to be a game that – you know, necessarily offensively will be 
easy right off the right out the gate. It's going to be a game that we're going to work, have to work at on both ends of the floor. They're tough. They execute. Um, so it'll be a good test on our home floor. Mobley has been out, I believe, the last couple of games. But when Mobley and Allen is both patrolling the paint, um, what what does that do for their defense? Yeah, they're they're long, athletic. We know Allen is is in the paint. He's contesting shots at the basket. Um, they're putting more shooting on the floor. You can see there offensively, they have an emphasis on shooting threes and shooting 40 plus a game. Uh, like I said, it, it'll be a good test for us. Are you confident that you guys can close out games? I know that was an issue early in the season, but at this time of year, you have to win those, yeah. those one or two possession games. What makes you confident that you guys can do that? I'm confident in the fact that we work at it. Uh, we watch film on it, we're honest about things that we need to do to continue to improve and now it's it's about going on the floor and having that carryover from film and practice. What do you, what do you think is this, is it just experience that wins those games or what? It's a combination of experience and concentrating on what are the right plays during those times and for us it's, it's simple. You got to make your free throws. You can't turn the ball over. You can't give up offensive rebounds and when we take care of those three factors we'll have a chance to win those games. Uh, Hoser just said you know, he believes y'all guys have the, the best bench in the league. For a lot of teams, it's like you just got to survive the bench minutes, right? And for y'all, I feel like those guys can come and really impact the game. How much does that help having a group that can come in and really change the game for y'all consistently? It's a tremendous help, and he's right. When those guys touch the floor, the game changes for us. It gets even better. And it's a credit to Jose, Trey, Najee, Larry, Dyson, when he was like Hawk, all of our guys, JRE, have contributed Matt Ryan to, to us winning a game here, a game there, and it's made our bench that much better. NBA teams have all kinds of different marketing campaigns for some of the individual awards, but it seems like your players have had their own campaign for her for all defense. <laughs> I mean, where do you think that comes from? Is it just partly that, I mean, obviously people love her, but just the fact that they know that he's not a self promoter, that you kind of have to promote him? Well, I think it comes from the example that he sets day in and day out. Um, we felt like he should have been on the all-defensive team last season. He's guarding the best players night in and night out. You guys saw De DeJounte Murray and his quotes about Herb, and many guys feel like that, including us. Like we, we, we feel like Herb is one of the best defenders in the league, and we want to make people aware of, of what he's doing to impact the game, and sometimes it goes unnoticed. But you have, a, there's a lot of talk about how this team has grown, the evolution of Zion, the evolution of Brandon, even CJ, but how does it feel knowing that you finally have all the pieces melting together and everybody's healthy to be able to do that? It's a blessing, to be honest with you. It's a blessing for our team to be healthy and to be clicking at this point in the season. And this is kind of what we projected, is that we would be rolling around this time, and now, it's really up to us on how far we want to go and dialing into the details, taking it game by game, not getting too ahead of ourselves, not putting too much pressure on ourselves, but enjoying this process. You guys think you found the, the right formula in regards to managing Zion and keeping him healthy throughout as well? We're continuing to work on it, but yes, we, we feel like we're in a good spot right now. Is that going to guide the, the SEC Player of the Year and the SEC Defensive Player of the Year to be a second round pick? How, how do you how do you wrap your, your your mind around that? I don't know, but I'm grateful he was and he came to us. So uh, whatever was supposed to happen, Herb is where he needs he's where he's supposed to be right now. We're grateful to have him. Do you think that oversight is kind of motivated him a little bit? I think he was already motivated. You know, from the day from day one since he's gotten here, he's been the same guy. First one in the gym, one of the last one that leaves, one of the hardest workers. And um, his teammates love him. We're grateful to have him. He, he's, he's, a, he's a true uh, professional and um, a great example for, uh, for young players that stay in college and just continue to work at it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Coach.